What is going on, everybody? Bobby Pye with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through tonight's Tuesday uh, four-game slate. But uh, just I had a, I had a, a chance last night. I, I finished fourth. It's not one of those where I feel so awful for finishing fourth. Sure, there were things that I could have, that could have broken my way. But actually, you know, there was a good chance I could have ended up eighth or ninth by the end of it, too. So I did talk through what I was going to do on the show. Um, I did talk through the builds on both of our shows, just sort of the general guys who I really liked and the ways I tried to get different. I thought I would share my screen and, and show you guys a little bit of what I was thinking, um, you know, just to reiterate some of the things that we talked about yesterday. But also, I thought it'd be helpful just to, to do this a little bit more often and talk about how to play different size tournaments. Um, sheets, feel free to weigh in whenever you want. I just... Yeah, perfect, perfect. The main thing I want to focus on is is, is that the, the playing a tournament with 130 people is very different than playing a tournament with 10,000 people. And while this would have been a competitive tournament lineup in a, in a lot of tournaments, they, I'm not going to be making much money in the, in the fadeaway or the lottery, you know, as, as we call it. But the thing I wanted to do is I obviously I wanted to play Garland and, and LeBron. I, I really felt like that was my main pairing. It was my main pairing everywhere. Uh, I did play Luca in my other lineups, uh, partially as a hedge, but partially because I did like Luca. I didn't think it was, you know, he was going to have as bad of a night as he did. But obviously siding with LeBron back in Cleveland, and you could tell pretty much from about few, about three or four minutes into the game that he was going to try to take over. His ownership stayed low at 11.5%. And, a half percent. and uh, Darius Garland is a guy who we sort of knew all day that there was a lot of good plays in that range. And he was a, you know, also a natural run back. I don't think I needed to play. I mean, I could have played other guys who were even a little bit cheaper, like Joe Val, who got the same amount of points and all this stuff. But I really liked Garland. I didn't think he had a huge fail path. And I actually think he could have ended up with a lot more than he did. Um, but the main thing that was sort of surprising was that Shake Milton, this is what people do in the industry. They, 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 everybody looks like an amazing play. Shake Milton is the best projected player, even an hour before lock and everything. And then all of a sudden he's not starting, which he wasn't supposed to start anyway. Pretty much no projection thing that I looked at had him starting. And yet still people just re respond by, by taking him out. Now there's plenty of other good values and good ways to go. But I liked the upside so much with him. I was, there was no way I was going to fade that. And I also did, feel, I thought he was going to be lower owned than I thought, but I thought it'd be like 10 to 15% at, at the lowest. I was shocked to see this ownership. So, which is why I tried to force in a Winslow play because I knew by the time everything had happened, no one was talking about Winslow. <clears throat> was, it didn't work out great. He was my, you know, obviously my worst performer and everything, but it allowed me to get different with my build. Also, the other thing that was pretty apparent was that small forward was the weakest position on the board on DraftKings because you have Harris, everybody was power forward only eligible and there was all this value at power forward. And then you also had everybody playing uh, Chris Stops, which, I, which obviously was a good play as well. Um, but Grant Williams, so I decided to take two guys who were small forward eligible and put them in the same line, just because I knew that in a 130 person tournament, it's, it's, it's that little differentiation is a, is, a, is a good way to get different when you're in the end, mostly playing chalk with two low owned guys um, or three low owned guys counting LeBron. And I wanted to try to, you know, to, to try to balance it out. I said I was going to play two Celtics. It was going to be my minimum. And I got two of the two of the good ones. I could have played Tatum in a different world instead of Garland and got the same amount of points and all that stuff. Um, but this was just sort of the builds that we talked about all day and the guys I didn't want to get off of. And I really did try to stick to it. I wasn't as high on Bagley as the field was in general. Like, you'll look at my other lineups. I didn't have Bagley in hardly any of them. I felt like he was a safe enough play. They, they allowed me to get Justice Winslow because that was the last two pieces I was debating. And as I said with Tobias Harris, who kind of had a little bit of a down game for what he was projected, he was going to be my lowest owned, my lowest owned uh, player outside of this, these on DraftKings. On FanDuel, I was playing him everywhere at 5,500. On DraftKings, I was going to try to fade him mostly, except for in my big one, because you can take the sure points. You don't need to reach for the 400 night. You know what I mean? You don't, no matter how good the players are, the, the, the highest score is not going to come from a hundred tournament with 100, 130 people. So you're playing for ceiling still, as you always are, because you're trying to beat 130 people. But also they, they only, you know, in this tournament, you can only enter three times, I believe, yesterday. So it takes away the edge of the other guys getting every variation where I need to try and get everything perfect. And it's, you know, it's an advantage to being able to play larger buy-in tournaments. Um, anyway, Sheets, any thoughts or anything before we get into the slate? Just wanted to. Yeah, um, I want to unshare your screens. I want to share my screen because I want to point out a couple of things as well. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, I'm, I didn't do as well last night, but I was very, I was very actually very psyched with one of my fundamental takes that we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I played him a little bit. I was hoping someone would have played him or whatever. I mean, again, for a total of what we did, like a 50 minute minute thing, and we spent like a full like. I spent a full like nine, 10 minutes kind of like pontificating and figuring out the fact that I thought Kristoff was going to get that 32 minutes yesterday. And he literally got exactly 32 minutes. Um, and he got like 57 fantasy points. <laughs> um, yeah, great. yeah. So, so I hope I don't know, 
you didn't even need them uh, to, to in the optimals or anything like that. But um, but uh, I, I thought that was pretty good. But here's what I wanted to show you. Uh, as you were pulling up your screen, I wanted to pull up, uh, I, I pulled up the wrong tournament, but I wanted to see exactly how your um, lineup did and would have done in some of the others. Cause you'd seem pretty, you know, content, not content to, to say that it wouldn't have done so well in the lotteries, but I just wanted to show you. 118th, I believe. Or that this is the box out. And in the box out, it would have actually tied for seventh. Um, but this is what I want to show. It's really weird. I, I, I talked about this yesterday, both in both the uh, afternoon and the evening. The NBA is hard, and and if you don't work, you know, if you don't work at it, you really don't put in the effort. You're giving away a lot. And listen, it happens to all of us. But not to call a guy out. I don't know who this guy is, but this guy ended up with the same lineup. Like, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean? And 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 it's it's. It just gives money away. And I know I'm sure he didn't do it. I, I'd like to say I'm sure he didn't do it on purpose. But yeah. but if you're going to play like a bunch of lineups, and it looks like you probably did, you, you got to get your technology straight. You know what I mean? Like, right. like, like you don't have to be that guy to deal with all your technology. But if you are going to play 150 lineups or whatever, you got to get this stuff right. You can't end up with six of the same lineup. I mean, you just can't do it. I um, 100%. Every now and then in the fadeaway, I'll end up with two or three if I can't get the switches I want right before right. lock at the same time or something, but that's, that's, right. that's the fadeaway too. That's not the $88. Go right. ahead. Jim. And that was, that was, that was pretty much all yeah. I had to say. Yeah. And, and so no, I would have done, I would, like I said, I would have been done well I, in the single entries. I think I would have had some second and thirds um, depending on the, you know, which ones, but it was, it was when you're playing, especially for me, like I don't play the 3180 every night. And when right. I do play it, I want to play it with the intention of like, giving myself the best chance while also realizing, Hey, I don't need, I can take the one or 2% guy here, but it's less necessary for me to try and make such a bold stance in a tournament like that. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's get into tonight's slate. Um, you want to start us off with uh, any sort of any general thoughts? It's going to. Yeah. I mean, when, when, when's the last time you had the Knicks like dominate the value board here? I, I haven't seen that in a while. And that's a, um, a weird one. And it's a scary one to be honest with you. I, I, so we'll, we'll check it out. There's only four games to choose from. So, so uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty strange with the, without the Randall, but there's a lot of projections. I'm just warning everybody about the Knicks tonight. There's guys I'm going to say I like, and there's guys who we're going to want to play. That's the most important starting lineup we can, we can ask for. Tibbs will play his starters a ton of minutes. If, they, if things are going well, there's, there's really outside of like Barrett, like no one other than Barrett and Burks, I guess are guaranteed, guaranteed their minutes. And you have also they're getting Atlanta on top of it. It's also a rematch of who beat them in the play. There's a lot to that game. So we'll get into that one next. But but starting off with Golden State and uh, Orlando, it might seem tempting to force some things in here. But then you look at the rest of the slate and wonder, what should I what, what kind of business do I really want to be doing in this game? What are, what are your thoughts of the guys you want? I know Steph's out. Nobody, uh, honestly, nobody, nobody, play, nobody plays anymore. Um, who? I'm every, everybody's out for every every team. It's like oh, I know, I know. It's I mean, a lot of these are real are real things too. By the way, some of them are real, some of them are rest. But yeah, well, I mean, at least Draymond's back. He's playing. Draymond's I, back. You good? I don't like anything on Golden State. I mean, for openers, um, it's four games. I guess you got to play somebody, but I don't really like anything there. And then on, okay, so Orlando. All right, so let's let's start with fishy value number one. So. Fishy value number one on the slate so far is, uh, and we'll get to, 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 to bigger ones later, is I have Maurice Mertz Wagner looking like a good play at 4K. I, have, I don't even know he was on this team. Um, and I also see him getting some ownership. Um, again, four-game slate, it, it's not, not, not surprising. And then um, that's, that's it? Ugh, can that all there be is Maurice Wagner and nobody else? And that's what I got. I got no one from Golden State and, and, and Maurice Wagner. What a slate. Well, I listened to someone else talk earlier today that literally stated nine Golden State players as excellent plays. I don't know oh. how many people could do that in turn, and, and it just seems like a bad product to give to the people. Golden today. State? Uh, who are you going to – I don't know. Yeah, there's a bunch of maybes on there. Like, without Steph, like, you could argue for Clay with the minutes being basically lifted. Um, yeah. You could argue for – I think Jordan Poole is a really good play. I mean, just, just for those of you who do like to game log watch too – Look at the game log, and that's with Steph a lot of those games, and he's getting there like a good portion of the time. So he's going to play. I, I don't know what's going to happen with Draymond. I think Jordan Poole is like an awesome, awesome basketball player. He's just a streaky guy. So at, at, when he has ownership, it's a little more tempting to fade him. Draymond, I'm not sure how many minutes they're going to let him go. So I'm, I'm really just 
I'm up in the air on Draymond, but it feels like one of those spots where, God, if we don't play him, at least in some of our lineups, it's probably going to be a mistake because against this Orlando team, it literally does everything that he does. Without Steph there, he'll have the ball in his hand even more, although you do still, you do have Poole and Thompson and other guys who can handle. It's not like he's like the only one, but it'll run a lot through him. Um, so I'm sort of stuck on Golden State outside of, of Poole and Draymond as my, probably my two favorites on DraftKings. On um, FanDuel, uh, I, I think you could include Wiggins into the mix, but it, none of them feel great to me, to be honest with you. So I'm sort of in the same page, but I do feel like the Poole one is one that I could be scared of if I, if I do fade it. On the Orlando side, I, I don't think there's anything particularly fishy about the Wagner play. His minutes are up. Okay. He, he plays all the time. His brothers play his, his brother, you know, his brother's the other, the other Wagner on the team. I like both of them tonight. Uh, Mo Wagner, for what it's worth, has put up, he had the 13 fantasy point game in only 13 minutes against Philly, and he had an 18 fantasy point game last time. Other than that, he's been over 20 in the other six games in his last eight. Um, with value on this slate, that's definitely like something, you know, we have the questionable Knicks, but this is a little bit more, at least we know what his role is. And he's basically playing that role consistently. So I like Mo Wagner. Um, I'm open to RJ Hampton, going back to RJ Hampton. I actually think this game environment might suit him pretty well. I know he hasn't put up a great game for us yet, but I, I still think at his price, you can get away with that one. Um, so one of probably one of those guys you, you would consider to be a, a, one of the value plays here. And then I, I, I feel like the same about Anthony Wagner, the, the Franz Wagner is the, the other Wagner. And to some extent, even Mo Bamba, like just, I just feel like there's, yeah, I expect someone to have a game, but I'm having a hard time picking out who it would be. And maybe when that happens, I like to usually go with Franz Wagner as a safety, as a safety one and Cole Anthony as a high upside play that could go a bunch of different ways. The, the, the wrinkle in all this is that Markel Fultz, it hasn't played 20 minutes in a game and I don't see why they would, but if he does, Oh boy. Like, and even if he doesn't, he can probably be considered some value. So a lot of questionable stuff here for me, but it's all going to depend on how we feel about the Knicks value and stuff later. Cause mostly these plays all feel kind of thin, but it's a great pace game um, for them. It's a good, you know, it's a good pace matchup. And I just think it's, I don't know. It's something I'm kind of interested in taking some shots on if they're going to be low on one of the Cole Anthony Franz Wagner, um, and, and I would even include Okiki as the value options. There's a lot of a lot of possibilities, which usually on a big slate would make me stay away because it's a small slate. I'm talking it through a little bit more. But the the, the ones I like most at the moment are Mo Wagner, uh, Hampton, uh, Franz Wagner, Okiki, and Anthony in that order. But I, I may I you know again I'm going to see how my lineups build out to see what I can what I need from that game because that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm not trying to build around that game. I'm just sort of seeing what I need with the exception of potentially playing Draymond at low ownership. That's something I'm not going to have a hard time resisting in that kind of a matchup. All right. This is you sheets. This is your, your, uh, your got your team. I, I, and, uh, I got, I got this one. I got this. One. Okay. Do it. Let me make this nice and easy, but for, for, first we'll talk about the next, um, you know, I think, I think Bobby, I think you hit it right on the head um, is that you, you, that the easy part of playing this game is going to be playing guys that are starters. Okay, the the trickier part is going to be playing guys that are not starters. Um, but but we could talk about that too. Like right now, they're they're projecting Obi Toppin at like like seventy four x or something like that. They're project they're projecting like twenty seven fantasy points at thirty two hundred. Um, they like him anyway in New York. Um, and if they, he gets to start, I mean that's that's kind of a rough thing. Um, yeah. But what's even more interesting is if he doesn't start. Um, cause I think he plays enough anyway, but then you're dealing with, with Tibbs, like the anti Tibbs play to play guys off the bench in, in New York. Um, so that, that, that's, I think that would be an interesting decision. Um, I, 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 listen, I don't follow the beat writers here, but I bet you in like five seconds, I'd probably figure out whether he'll be starting or not. Um, probably I, I imagine he would, but who knows? Um, so that's, that's for me, you look at the starting line and look, our, obviously RJ Barrett is going to, like you said. He's, he's going to be a good play. He's get, he was probably taking 30 shots a game anyway. I mean, now with, now with, now with Randall out, maybe it was, I don't know how many physically the guy can take, but he'll take as many as he, as he can. Uh, Burks, like you said. And then you got all this fishiness, right? Um, well, I don't think Emmanuel quickly is particularly fishy, but but he's, you know, whatever. You have Jericho Sims who might, who knows who ends up playing some of these guys, you know, like, if Jericho Sims somehow ends up popular some way, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know what people are going to do with this. But like you said, I would just kind of watch the starters. But let me let me talk about something else, though. So 
I, uh, after COVID, the very first time I, I went to like a real big sporting event after COVID was I went to the Knicks Hawks uh, playoff game last year. Okay. Uh, it was the elimination game. Uh, it turned out to be the elimination game. Um, and it was a zoo, you know, it was the first time really that anybody had been out of the house in like two years. Right. And, and it was, and the place was a mob scene and, and I, Listen, may, maybe it's like this in every arena now. I have never seen a crowd so vocally getting after another player than they were going after Trey Young in this game. They were cursing at him, F-wording him, calling him all kinds of names, just getting him all freaking juiced, like the whole game, okay? Uh, Trey Young, F. Trey Young, what God knows what. And he ended up just, you know, just sending the Knicks home for the season, right? This year, as I mentioned, um, you know, he's you're fading Trey at your own risk in general. Um, he's just been putting up all kinds of numbers and he's not on the injury report. And he's, I think that this is actually somehow their first trip to New York this season. I was trying to look, look, and they've already played like I think three times. I think they were all in Atlanta. This first trip back to New York, he must have had um, one in New York. So you would think, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, game. they had one in New York, but Trey didn't play. Is that really true? I mean, it was Christmas Day. Oh, uh, well, I mean, he's going to get 100 fantasy points. I mean, like, I, I really think it's impossible on a four-game slate to not have. That, that's that's going to be yeah. my take. Can I, poke, um, can I poke back just at that take? Because I really like what you're saying. And that was my first instinct as well. I'm just going to point out that with no Middleton and you have Giannis in a great matchup. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> game, and you have Jokic in, in a game where he literally just scored 95 fantasy points. Uh, I get it. That's, that's not an exaggeration. Good. That was 95 fantasy yeah. points. And they, they can both do it. And then uh, – and the, those those lineups I'll probably lose, I guess. You know what I mean? Um, I, I I don't know. I just I just think he's gonna go. I think he's gonna just go to town. I really do. Yeah, I think the only thing that stops him is if they blow him out of the stadium, which they could with no with no Randall. Um, but uh, that that that's that that's my take. And I don't even know what he's projecting for. Um, I guess he has to be projecting pretty well on a four game slate. But uh, like you said, there is Jokic, there is there is Giannis, and obviously they rate to score more fantasy points than he does. But they're twelve k and he's ten four. And uh, I don't know. That, that's where I think that's where I'm going to start my life. I love what you're saying. And I, and I actually like that was my exact first thought when I went through the bills today. Um, I just have a hard time with the, the other two situations as well. What you can sure. do is, is middle it out with, you know, and we'll talk about the other games, but I think it's important to talk about strategy. If you, if you wanted to play like this, that, that's the kind of lineup where you end up with a, with a Jordan pool as a 7,400 guy to get you 40 something fantasy points as a Drew Holiday, you get Drew Holiday who's going to be popular anyway, but 7,800, you just, you just do a different ish build and just have to decide, look, if, if, I hope Jokic and Giannis only one of them get 75 or something. And then Trey has to do his part too. And Trey, Trey gets 65 and they get 75. You're happy about it, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I like, I, I like Trey very much. It's, I'm, you know, I'm, narrative driven is, is a real thing. And I'm not saying that LeBron couldn't have gone off against Cleveland the same way. But uh, the attitude is a little different when he was playing there yesterday. And I think the attitude is going to be a little different for Trey today. I do think that knowing that the way uh, Tibbs is going to try and coach this game, I think he's going to do something. I think he's literally going to just like high trap him the whole game and try and get the ball out of his hands. I mean, the Knicks are still playing for some desperation and this is a, a, a game that matters and it's at the garden and everything. So I do think there's some, uh, some value in maybe taking a look at some of the other guys in, you know, in the lineups that you're playing a Giannis or Jokic and not playing a Trey Young. Um, and it's, by the way, it's really hard to play two of these guys together. Um, and even then you feel like you kind of wish you could play the third one on FanDuel. It's not, it's not difficult. So it's going to be much easier to play Trey on FanDuel. He'll be a lot more popular over there. Um, but I, I do want, I do like the runbacks because I think we're going to be playing at least a couple Knicks. So Bogdanovich's Q tag does have me like, okay, what are we going to do if that, if that, if that happens? I think that the natural thing would be to play, uh, Kevin Herter or, maybe a little more DeAndre Hunter just because the minutes would probably even go up a little higher. But overall, really, it just means more for Trey. And the other guy and the other ex-Nick who should factor into this game is Danilo Gallinari. Um, Gallinari just put up 39 fantasy points. I think he had like oh, he had 27 real life points the other day. He's got a ceiling. He's 5,100. I like his price. So he's the other one I would be using maybe if I wasn't using Trey or even in addition to Trey in a little bit of a stack because RJ Barrett is going to be a very difficult fade in any, on, any, on either site. Uh, Alec Burks is going to be a very difficult fade on either site. You just tell me the minutes against Atlanta alone. And our, I, I would have already even, I would have been playing Burks at 5,200 on FanDuel, whether Randall was playing or not, not to mention you take away all that usage. It, it's got to go somewhere. Um, quickly is going to be a good play. Uh, 
It's the kind of play that I would usually want to fade because of, I would say scoring reliant, but the truth is he gets to the free throw line so much. He kind of has a floor with the scoring anyway. He's pretty much always gets there. Um, so even if he doesn't shoot the ball, well, he's going to find a way to get to, to be active and get to the line. This is a really good matchup for him. So in order, I have it as Barrett Burks quickly and the guys you're spending money for and the guys you're not spending money for. I think that you could make just as good a case for Jericho Sims as Obi Toppin. Um, uh, Jericho Sims has been, has gotten more run than Obi Toppin has. Uh, they've liked him. He's been, con- you know, pretty consistently getting at least some run. You do have Taj Gibson sort of to muck things up. If you heard something weird, like Taj Gibson isn't going to play tonight for sure. Cause he hasn't played in a while. Then you could go ahead and, and, and just literally divide these guys up. Um, you could feel, you could actually load up. You could probably even get away with playing both of them if you want to know the truth. But yeah, I do think that you're going to want to have, to, you're probably going to have to have one of those guys, whether it be Sims or Toppin, uh, at least at my, as my first look goes. And I, I, other people are going to play Capella. I'm not really that interested. I'm not loving the matchup for Mitch Rob. The guy who I'm going to make a way to point to go out of my way to play is Evan Fournier. Um, it's a good, it's just a, it's a good matchup for shooters. You have a similar type of thing and he's, you know, he's cheaper than quickly on FanDuel, for example. And he's been putting up, you know, his last four games, 26, 31, 31, 38. Now you take Julius Randall out of the mix and you get Atlanta and you have no ownership on the guy. And I just think that I want to make a priority of trying to use him as a standout play. Now, I think by the end of the day, people are going to actually get onto the play a little bit, but he's not going to project well enough for them too. So, so I, I actually want to play, if I'm going to play three Knicks, it would probably be Barrett Burks. It'll probably be Barrett, one of Barrett or Burks with Fournier and Toppin or Sims. But I don't think the only thing is playing Burks, Barrett and Fournier together is probably asking a little too much from similar type of guys or but but again, they, they, they are down. So it's, it, it's doable today. Um, but I, I'm looking at playing Fournier over quickly as a way to get really different on the slate. And more importantly, just that Fournier is going to be, you know, right now I've got him projected at two percent owned. I guarantee it'll be higher than that on Fandle is projected at 10 percent. That's a good way to get different on a four game slate for a guy who could actually end up going out there and score 30 life, real life points. So I wonder, I wonder uh, if you could just comment again on, on, on uh, what I suggested about, about starters versus non-starters. I mean, what, what, do you, what are you inclined to do if. Um... I think it matters more on the larger slates where people have a ton of options. And last night we had a ton of late breaking options. So there was a lot of, you know, the, the Washington situation with no Kuzma, you know, there was just a ton of things out there to, to take, to try to take advantage of. So I, I don't think, I don't know tonight. I, yeah, of course they're going to be lower owned, but quickly he's not going to be low owned. Um, and he's not going to start. And Fournier is going to be much lower owned in his starting because we know the roles of the Knicks. Um, but Jericho Sims versus Obi Toppin, who basically have a similar range of outcomes at one, for one to be, you know, 50% owned or 60% on the other to be 10 then you should start thinking about stuff like that. And Sims, you know, assuming that Sims doesn't start coming off the bench. And, and by the way, if Sims starts, I would flip it. I would, I would say, okay, well, then Obi right. Toppin is a great tournament play. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Um, let me just, uh, I want to share my this very highly proprietary algorithm that, that led me to my Trey Young play. I just want to show you. Like, this is all you need to know. I know okay, that's it, that's it. This is literally all you need to know. You just, just YouTube Trey Young and F Trey Young. When they, I mean, it's literally, it's all. This is this is all it is. This is all Trey Young's about is coming to Madison Square Garden and shutting the fans up. It's literally his entire entire well, life right now. This could have been yesterday's slate, and I probably would have made it a priority. It would have been hard with the LeBron thing, but I would have tried to play. I probably would have had had to not play Garland to try to fit in one of Giannis, Trey Young, or Jokic because all of these guys are in tremendous tremendous spots. Let's 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 get let's get into it. So let's let, yeah. let's talk about the Chicago Milwaukee. Um, you know. Uh, Giannis 12-1. Um, you're gonna need points. Uh, it's gonna, I, I mean, if you, you have, you're gonna have to play either Giannis, Jokic, or Trey, or two of them, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're, I, I really think that's where the points are coming from. But then, you know, again, there are other, there are other guys like DeRozan is, is pretty cheap at 8,600 nowadays. Um, so I like that. Um, but for me, it's Giannis number one, and then. And then DeRozan on the Chicago side. Let me see if what's his name projects well. Caruso again. Yeah, Caruso 4,100 projects well again. Uh, Vooch cheap enough, 7,700. Levine cheap enough, 7,500. 
and 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 Milwaukee, I just don't really play these other guys. Um, but like you said, maybe something like Drew at seventy eight hundred is is a way to get some of this other stuff in. So, uh, what what do you think? What do you think of this game? Yeah, I mean, this is look. This is the this is. Uh, <laughs> Could be a fun game. I'm a little worried about, I mean, Chicago has been one of the worst teams in the NBA. We, uh, and it's, it's not, it's not my man Caruso's fault. First of all, nothing's ever Caruso's fault. I want to just give the guy a hug and tell him that because I love him and I miss him so much in LA. But uh, uh, it, since he's come back and even before that, they've just been terrible. And DeMar DeRozan is probably worth noting that this guy hasn't scored over 40 fantasy points. His highest was 41.75. He's, he hasn't been at 50, but once in his last 11 games, and we want to play him yeah. at 8,600. Let's think about that for a second. You know what I mean? Now, yes, all, all the situations about them staying in the game and everything the game could mean, they, they all lead you to want to play him. By the way, he took 30 shots the last time these two teams played. Uh, he only made 11 of them. He only had 44 fantasy points, but that's a, that's a lot of usage. <laughs> um, uh, I, I like all of these guys, and it's really hard for me to separate them um, except for the fact that I would say that Levine tends to be lower owned and maybe won't be today because he's had two really two big games lately but at his price I really like that that opportunity that that idea and then I really like Vooch um but I I think you I think that Vooch is a little bit more they're all a little better plays on FanDuel to be honest with you uh and this is what you do if you're not going to build I think you want to try to play one of these three guys in a normal build now if you're going to play Trey Young and Giannis or Jokic you can't do that no. I don't think <laughs> um but well, I mean, you play Jericho possible. Sims and all that stuff, you know, like, I don't even know, but can you, can you, can you throw it up there and see how much is left? If you played those guys sheets just for one second, just, just if you played Trey Young, let's say DeRozan. Yeah. See, you can't really do it with DeRozan, but you could do it maybe with a Levine or a Vucevic if you had literally everybody else at 3k or less. So if we had similar news as yesterday, that would have been the kind of slate you want to do that. Um, but I, I'll just say in an order of what I'm going to be playing on, on FanDuel, it'll be, uh, Vu, uh, DeRozan, Vooch, then Levine on DraftKings. It'll be Levine, Vooch, then DeRozan for me, um, just because of pricing and lineup construction. And then on Milwaukee side, uh, Bobby Portis, I don't care that it's not the normal revenge narrative at 5.6 on FanDuel. Bobby Portis is like, by, he's, I, I would say he's almost more of a priority for me than Giannis, because if Giannis doesn't get there, you get sort of the double, the double sway. You know what I mean? Um, but if you, like, the, you know, if Portis puts up, Portis, Portis can go out there and put up 40 or 50 in this game and then keeping Giannis in the 50 to 60 range. And, and I think you, I mean, you could play them both together on Fandle pretty easily, but I really like Portis. I don't know if I'll get to him as much on DraftKings. Um, I like holiday a lot as well. So in, in order of ranking, I think Giannis is obviously number one, but it's hard to get to him. So Portis would be my second, uh, sorry, holiday would be my second favorite Portis, my third on DraftKings. Portis, my second favorite on FanDuel. Holiday, my third favorite on FanDuel. Actually, Portis might be my favorite on FanDuel ahead of Giannis. They're really close. Um, the only problem is it's too easy to get Giannis in. Connaughton and Grayson Allen are the value options here. And if, you, if you're feeling – this is the 150 play that I'm probably not going to make in my 3180 tonight or whatever. But uh, Jordan Wara at 3,400, you know, Middleton's gone. Connaughton's back, so that, that hurt, that kills him. But Middleton's gone. So that could actually, we could see some Jordan Wara minutes, especially if you get foul trouble from Bobby Portis, which happens. You know what I mean? Anything like that, you could end up seeing him play anywhere from the, like the two to the four. And, and I just think he's an incredible long, large field tournament play if you're going to combine a bunch of that value together. Um, but I think right now I have Connaughton ahead of Grayson Allen. If ownership goes too much that direction, I'm happy to switch over to Grayson Allen uh, instead of Connaughton. I don't think it's a massive difference between the two, uh, like the Connaughton does more on the court, but Grayson Allen has more shooting upside probably. So uh, that, that's the way I have him ranked for right now. But so you do answer, want exposure to this game. So to answer your question from before, I mean, like you played Jokic and Young and Trey. You could, and if you played like a, something like, a, you could play like a Vucevic really easily, actually. Really easily. Yeah, okay. I don't know if I have any. I, I put in Caruso, Connaughton. Ob and 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 and, 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 and yeah. You know what I mean? Those are those are legitimately rated plays. That's fair. That's totally fair. Um, and, and but if you did the Vucevic thing, that, see in that lineup, I probably if I'm not going to play Giannis, I would just just talking game theory a little bit. Yeah, I yeah, would yeah. probably want to have a Holiday or a Portis if I'm not going to play Giannis. So in Holiday, right. 100 more. So you could do it though. That's the point is you could do it. Um, right. the only the only reason why you wouldn't want to do that is because I'm telling you right now, like that. That game has a seven, six, a seven point spread. It wouldn't surprise me if it came down to the wire, and it wouldn't surprise me if Milwaukee won by 30. Um, yeah. I don't think there's a whole lot of other 
results that are, maybe Milwaukee wins by 15. That happens. I, I don't think this game is going to be, I think there's a very real risk. This game gets, gets ugly fast, especially with Chicago on the back to back. All right. Um, Clippers in Denver. What do you got here? We got a lot of weird little revenge ones. Cause here's another funny revenge one for his brother. Who do you Marcus, got? Marcus Morris against Jokic and his brother. Remember they got into the. Oh, the that was something right. That's right. And Morris, like, look, like I said, this happened before, and I was worried that Morris is, like, legitimately going to get, like, ejected is, is part of my fear. Um, Morris shot the ball a bunch of times the last time they played, just didn't make many. But uh, just it is kind of an interesting one. So, anyway, go ahead, Chiefs. Well, you didn't want to play these same types of builds. Like, you didn't want to play, um, like, uh, Drew Holiday. I mean, you could. But you could play Reggie Jackson on the other side of Jokic. Um, that certainly makes a lot of sense. Um, he rates to be probably the best. Clipper play, um, so you could do that. But I, like, I kind of like the Marcus the Marcus Morris idea. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of into that. So maybe 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 you could play both of them. Maybe you could play Marcus Morris and Reggie Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe say that you need both of them to have good games to keep up with Jokic. And then 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 you got then you have something. Um, yeah, I kind of like that actually. So I like Reggie Jackson on the on the Clipper side. I lo yeah, like Jokic on the Denver side. As usual, I don't like anybody else on Denver. Um, I really like Morris tonight and he's going to have some ownership, unfortunately, because I was sort of like hoping for a spot. And, and by the way, it's not just that, you know, Morris's usage lately has been terrific. Um, not much but different than Jackson's and he's put up 40 in three out of the last five. I don't mind him in this matchup at all. Um, it just like, you know, straight up matchup wise. And, and then the problem I run into with the Clippers is you have so many like, yes, one of these guys is going to get there. Um, <laughs> it's really, really hard. And people might go, Oh, Covington put up, you know, we're probably going to get this later on the air. Covington had 38 fantasy points and played 30 minutes. And I'm like, look at that. What happened in that game with Utah? That was a 35 point game. That's the reason why Morris played 14 minutes. That's the reason why uh, Reggie Jackson played 14 minutes or whatever it was. Uh, yeah. 14 minutes. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that people, if they hope they don't look too much at that kind of stuff, but I, I guarantee there's going to be some Robert Covington questions later today. Um, the, the, I think that Zubac and Hartenstein are kind of interesting large field plays in different, you know, whatever. One of them probably is interesting. I don't know. I, I'm sort of probably going to stay away from that. The same thing with Coffee, Man, Batum. One of these guys I, I'm, is going to get there. I would lean Batum over the other ones. And I, but it's, but again, it's not like by a landslide. And then Reggie Jackson, I would like this play a lot better if it wasn't going to be at the ownership I think it's going to be at. Um, I think that it is, I think it is going to be he and I think that you're going to see people play he, Drew, and then one of the superstars as, as sort of like a baseline. And then you'll also have some mixed in Jordan Poole. Uh, but Jordan Poole and Reggie Jackson, I, that, that's, that's, that's the decision I have to make um, going tonight. And I, I think I would, I, I want to lean Poole actually, um, but I'm not sure that's right. I'm curious where the ownership ends, you know, projections end up on them. And that's what I'll probably let make my decision. And then I love Jokic. Uh, I think you could make an argument for Monty Morris here. Like, I don't think I'm going to do it, but just throwing it out there. Bones Highland has been out of this world, like crazy good. And, and also like on the highlight shows. So, uh, I mean, look, he's put up 30 or more and what, six out of six, five out of six. Um, he's it's interesting. Um, but a bunch of that is that's how I feel about most of these guys. The one guy who I will play some of and, you know, shoot me now guys, whatever. It's a four game slate. Aaron Gordon's 4,500 on FanDuel. He's going to play minutes. Nothing wrong with the matchup for him. Uh, he's 4,500. You know what I'm saying? Cheats like, yeah. well, we're speculating about other value. At least we have a guarantee on minutes from that guy. So, oh, and by the way, going back to it, I do like Caruso in that Milwaukee game as well as another value piece that you mentioned. Um, all right. Um, should, should, should I go through my, my plays real quick? Cause I've got yeah. some priority here. Yeah. So I think one of Morris or Jackson, I, I, you could play them together, but I, I probably am going to play just one of those guys in, in, in my lineups. Uh, Jokic, Giannis, I have right now, I have Jokic a tiny bit ahead of Giannis because if I don't play Jokic, I don't really want to play that many other guys outside of Aaron Gordon on FanDuel a little bit. Um, and if I don't play Giannis, I have tons of other options, including the value that are ways at least he doesn't get there. You know what I mean? But that's yeah. the way I'm looking at it. Is it. It's more logical to me to try to try to try to go about it that way. I really like uh, uh, Trey. I don't mind Gallinari in that game. Barrett is going to Barrett and Burks are near 
how do we, they're like in a near how do we fade them category, but maybe instead you play Fournier instead of one of those guys or the other one, is, which is quickly. Um, uh, one of DeMar DeRozan, Levine, or Vooch, I announced, I said already my, my favorites on those on each site. Um, and then if you're not playing Giannis, you want to play of Holiday or Portis probably, or you want to play some, you know, Connaughton maybe and, uh, and a, a Grace Allen, something weird like that, because without Middleton, we don't know exactly what the rotation will look like. Um, Caruso, um, and that's pretty much my main guys. The, the ones that stand out on FanDuel are more, I, I like Fournier a little better over there. Portis, I like a better over there. All of the Bulls, um, still Barrett, DeRo, uh, still Barrett, Vooch, DeRozan, I already mentioned the Bulls. Uh, Jokic and Trey are, Trey is great on both sides, just easier to get in on FanDuel. Oh, and if you wanted to, to reach in the first game, Wendell Carter is a monster. Um, yeah, I really think he's coming into his own, but I don't think I want to pay 8400 on DraftKings when we have some other good plays to spend up for. I sure. am okay with the idea of spending 7300 on him on FanDuel. So, and, and by the way, maybe I should be open to him on DraftKings as well, because like we say, if these guys get there, I mean, he put up 59 in the last game. I'm not saying he's going to do that again, but if, if they get there, he can get there in a big way. Um, and right. they have Suggs in there tonight. So just throwing that out there. All right, Cheats, anything else before we get out of here and we get, jump on no, to the weirdest golf I video? I think we're good. Okay. All right. Well, good luck to everybody tonight. Let's have another, you know, I'll, I'll take, if it just happens every night, I'm not going to be upset about not winning the big one if I win 20K. I'll, be just, I'll just take it again. But uh, hopefully somebody else takes down a big one tonight. We'll see you guys live at 545 Eastern time and uh, let's make some money. Good luck, everybody.